Hey everybody, it's Chris, and I am going to try to do a tree ring pour tonight, but I'm going to do it a little bit differently than what I have in the past. Generally, when I do a tree ring pour, I only use two colors, and tonight I have six colors, and I'm kind of going for tones of reds and pinks. I thought it might be kind of fun to do a tree ring um, for Valentine's Day. So we'll see how that works out. I have a 12 by 12 canvas. I purchased the um, I purchased this canvas at Michael's. It's the gallery wrap, so it's got the thicker profile on it. I really love to pour on the thicker canvases. The only thing that I'm going to do to prep this is to put four push pins just in the corners of the canvas so that it stays up off of my surface so I can make sure that the canvas itself is not sitting in paint puddles and it'll keep the edges a little bit cleaner as well as the bottom. I do not tape the backs of my canvases. So far it has not been an issue. Um, I know some people do tape the backs to keep them cleaner, but I, I haven't had any problems with anyone not wanting to purchase them because there was paint on the back. I think I kind of agree with the idea that people realize that you actually did paint it if there's actually paint on there and it's not just some purchased piece that you're trying to pass off as a piece of art. So I've got my four push pins on the corners and then I'm going to pour my paint into a plastic cup. This cup I actually, um, excuse me, this cup I actually mixed my neon pink paint in tonight. So I still have some in the bottom. So I'm gonna start with that as my um, first color. And then I like to kind of go light to dark. So the next color I'm going to put in is medium magenta. I have all of my paints pre-mixed and I use these condiment bottles from, um, excuse me, from Walmart. So I have my paint all pre-mixed and I'm just gonna kind of layer this in here and see what we get. This is my white, it's the uh, Flow Acrylic from Michaels. And I mix that with my pouring medium as well as I put a little bit of tube white paint in there as well. And so we'll just pour some of that in. And I'm not gonna worry about having layers of paint. I'm just gonna go ahead and Put this in here however it goes in. I'm not gonna try to put it in in a uniform way. Um, I do tend to layer since these are in, oh, you can see some cool stuff going on already. I do tend to kind of layer because my paints are in these condiment bottles, so it's very easy for me to do that. This is silver. This is also a flow acrylic from Michaels that's mixed. And then this is crimson. So we'll get a little bit of that red in there. And then I have the light portrait pink. And this one doesn't wanna come off. So we'll put some of that in there. And then we'll go back to some neon. This might be a little bit more paint than what I need, but I can always stop pouring. And then the medium magenta again. And then I think we'll just start or finish it off with a little bit more white. I find that the white is what kind of tends to give me some of my cell action and the cool stuff that happens. And um, so you can see my little cup of paint there. And I'm just going to start pouring this out into, into a ring onto the canvas. I think I'll start with a little bit of white on the canvas and kind of get things going a little bit. I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna try to cover this completely, but just kind of want to give it a, a little bit of paint on there so it kind of moves a little bit and makes it a little bit easier to paint, hopefully. I've not tried this before, but I've watched other people that have started with some paint, so we'll put a little bit of paint on there and see if that helps get things going. And then I'm just going to pour from the top, and I like to pour into a circular motion, and I just kind of want to keep my paint steady and keep it coming out nice and even. And hopefully we'll see all the little colors start to come out. I can see the white and the portrait pink and some of the neon and definitely that medium magenta. The portrait pink definitely has more of a peachy tone to it, but that's all right. I should start seeing some of those other colors coming out too. So I'm just gonna continue to kind of swirl my paint around and you can see that it's forming the rings already. Now the silver is starting to come out. So you can already see that it's forming rings onto the canvas. And we'll just continue to pour this paint out in little rings and see what we end up with here. 
He's trying to get Charlie to be into the video tonight, but he does not want to cooperate with me. He seems to be more interested in fighting with his sister and his brother, which you can probably hear in the background once in a while. So I'm just going nice and slow so that I can keep those rings forming. I generally, when I paint, when I do a tree ring pour, I generally just mix my paint with Floetrol. I don't use my pouring medium because I don't necessarily want cell action going on, but tonight I decided I would use my pouring medium and see what happens because generally with the medium that I use, I do get cells. You can kind of see on the edge over here on the left side that I definitely have some cells forming, which is okay. I think it'll make it a little bit more interesting. And I like the idea of putting metallic paints in pores. I love the glittery aspect of it and a little bit of sparkle that it brings. So I'm just gonna kind of raise this up a little bit more. And it's looking pretty neat. I'm just gonna continue and see if I can get most of my paint out of the cup, I think. This is a 12 by 12 canvas, so Hopefully I put enough paint on here to cover the whole thing. That would be bad if I can't cover the whole thing and I'm doing a video, but we'll see what happens. You can always cover the corners with white when all else fails. So now we can see the neon that's in the bottom of the cup. Generally, whatever the first color is that you put in your cup is the last color that comes out. So I can definitely see some of that neon coming out still have the white and some silver that's coming out and then I just want to make sure that I don't leave a crazy tail so I'm gonna to try to be kind of careful and pick this up a little bit and then I still got a little drop there that's all right okay so I'm just gonna let this kind of flow out just a tiny bit get most of the paint out of the cup there you can definitely see the silver in this part of it and some silver in the center so when I do a tree ring, I like to pick it up and I kind of like to go in a circular motion because it is a tree ring. And if we've done things right, we actually have some rings in there. So I kind of like to just roll it around and get the paint flowing. And it's okay if you distort it and you lose, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. And you can see that mine kind of tended to go over to the left side of the canvas a little bit more and that's all right. So I'm just gonna let it kind of flow over and see if we can get some of the more of the corners covered and get a bigger part of our canvas covered here. Kind of lost the red. The red is out here on the outside and I definitely have more pink in the center than I do. Probably should have layered a little bit more into the cup with my colors, but that's all right. So now I'm just gonna see if I can't get these corners covered and get my paint flowing over the sides. And then I'll just bring it back and then try to roll it up here towards the top. And you kind of use the weight of your paint. So my paint right now is kind of sitting up towards the top of my canvas. So I'm just gonna let it work down to this lower left corner and let that flow off. And then I'll bring it back and see if I can get it to straighten out a little bit. I probably should have had a little more paint. That's all right, we're just gonna go with it and see what happens. If it's awful, we'll just paint over it. No big deal. So now I'm trying to get my paint weight down to the lower left, which it's starting to flow down here. And then I'm gonna see if I can't get this corner covered. And let it flow over just the sides there. And then I'll let it flow down to the bottom and across to the right. And the tree rings are definitely still there. It's looking pretty neat, really. And then I'm trying to, the paint is dripping along the side there and I don't necessarily like that. But once I get this corner over here covered, then I'll start addressing the sides of it. I'm just gonna let that drip over the side a little bit more to get the edges covered. And then I just have this one last corner. And I did stretch it out a bit more than probably what 
I would have liked, but I do think it looks pretty neat. I do have paint going off on the sides. Definitely better on the top than I do on the side on some of the other sides, but that's okay. Now we'll just let it sit. I think it turned out really cool. I love how milky this looks here with the white. And I think it'll continue to pop up with some different cells and such. So I'm just going to kind of let my paint drip down the sides in hopes that it covers most of it. And then I'll just pick up where I can and make sure that my corners are covered and try to stay in the color that is kind of around the edges on the corners. And sometimes I'll even pick it up off of the bottom of the corner because it's definitely the same color there. And then on the edges where it's a little bit thinner, we'll just let it kind of flow down and cover as much as it can because it will continue to drip. But a lot of it's looking pretty good here. So all in all, I think it turned out pretty neat. It's definitely, the neon pink definitely made it nice and bright, but it's kind of different. I kind of like it. Thanks so much for tuning in today and check back later to see the finished project.